Hi, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well and is surviving the 4th of July um, holiday here in the U.S. Uh, many places have made fireworks uh, illegal this year, at least out here in the West where we have high fire risk, but that doesn't seem to deter everyone, unfortunately. Um, but today we're talking about harnessing again, uh, training a fearful dog to wear a harness. And last week we worked up to the point where you could, the dog could put their head through the harness and you could release the weight of the harness onto the dog's neck. And then this week we're going to pick up uh, where we left off last week and talk about um, clipping the, you know, moving the straps and clipping on the harness so you can actually use it. All right. Let's get to our slides right away. And by the way, um, as usual, if you have questions as we go through this, you can enter them um, under wherever you're watching the video, enter them under the video as a comment and they'll pop up for me. All right, so dog afraid of the harness and who is this for? So this is just a little review from last week. If you have a dog who runs away when you pick up their harness, um, or you can put the harness on, but your dog kind of hunkers down or cowers or flinches, or even maybe your dog um, growls or snaps when you try to put their harness on, uh, you'll probably need this kind of conservative training. This week, we're talking about the actual clips, moving the straps and clipping the harness on, as I mentioned. Uh, some things to think about when you are working with your own dog, and I'll point these out in the videos as we go through. One is, what is your position? Um, often when we are putting harnesses on dogs, we're kind of standing over them, standing up and leaning over them. And that's a pretty tough um, position for many dogs to tolerate. So you may wanna think about sitting and whether you, know, you can avoid being head on. Could you be a little bit sideways to your dog? And I'll show you some examples of that as well. Um, when we get to working with the straps, how much do you move the strap matters? Um, and are you lifting up the strap in a way that makes it touch the dog or not? Um, and I bet those of you with really sensitive dogs, if you've started to work through this, you've noticed that some dogs, as soon as that strap touches them, they'll flinch. So this is something to pay attention to. Um, and also, as you're working with the harness, how many hands are reaching toward the dog? You can start out a lot of times with just one hand, which is easier for most dogs, but um, most harnesses require you to use both hands to clip, to clip the straps. And so reaching toward the dog with two hands is something you may have to deliberately work into your training plan so you're not, um, it doesn't fall apart when you get to this stage. All right, I think we are now gonna go to the video. All right, yep, straps and clips. All right, so the first couple steps, and this is broken down in a general way. Every dog will probably need a little bit of personalization with their training plan. Um, I'm showing you what I did with Pancake in kind of a quick overview. But um, I'm pointing out things just to think about because you may try something, even some of the steps I show you, and they're too hard for your dog um, or too easy. Hopefully they're too easy, but say they're too hard. Um, think about how you can modify some of these um, some of these details. So the first thing I like to start with is just reaching toward the strap. So right now the dog is going to have the harness already around their neck if it's a, one of those type of harnesses, which is what I have examples of here. Um, just reaching toward the dog for many dogs is a red flag to them. They're like, uh oh, what's happening? So we're going to start reaching without touching the harness or them or anything. Once we're able to reach like we're going to, you know, get the straps without actually touching them, the dog's happily hanging out and not trying to run away from us, then you can touch the strap. And I'll show you a couple examples with Little Pancake, who is our hero in this series. So here, Pancake has the harness around his neck. And I'm just going to reach toward where the end of the strap is, like I was going to grab it, but I won't actually pick it up. And here, I'm kind of needing to reach straight at him, sort of from a head-on position. I changed my position in the next rep, so you'll see the difference there. So I reached. He just sat there. So I'm going to 
reward him for that. Then see, I moved to the other side, so it was a little bit easier. It was less loomy. I wasn't reaching right at his face, toward his face. After um, a couple of reaches, I did this more invasive reach here. A lot of these harnesses have a strap that you need to like reach under the dog to pull it up uh, under their armpit, I guess. Um, and that can kind of put them off. So here I did one, I did several, but I'm showing one. Um, just reaching under his arm. Oops. Right there. Reaching all the way under like I needed to grab the strap. And then I'm rewarding him for hanging out with me. You'll see him sitting a lot in these videos. That is not... Um, a requirement I had in my training plan. Sometimes he stands, sometimes he lies down, um, but he seems to prefer the sitting position and that's fine. Whatever position he puts him in is what we work in, puts himself in. All right, I'm also gonna do a reach toward that top clip. Don't forget, you'll need to be touching those as well when you buckle the harness. And now just a little, gonna start actually touching the clips. Very slight, you see I barely just nudged it there. Or tapped it. Oops, just a second. All right, any questions about these very first steps, the reaching, the first uh, steps with the straps and clips? Right now, we just, we started by just reaching toward them and making sure our dog could handle that, and then um, just touching, touching the straps. And now we're actually going to move the straps. This is another big, um, even though I know this training plan seems to be in teeny little increments um, and maybe painfully slow, um, this is a pretty big jump for a lot of dogs when you start moving those straps around. So remember, with strap movement we talked about, um, you can think about how much you're moving the strap around when you grab it and whether or not it's touching the dog. There are those are two big parameters to pay attention to and also whether you've got one or two hands reaching toward the dog. So I'm gonna start with one hand because that's easier and just a little lift there. Little lift, no touch. Make it a little harder. There I lifted it up but didn't touch him. Still just one hand. Now I'm lifting and that's against his chest there so it's definitely touching him. Now two hands and lifting as if I'm gonna clip it and then put it down. And I know that this video is kind of flying through the steps. I didn't do each step just one time, generally. Uh, but we would have many hours of video to go through if we watched the whole process. So that was two hands, which allows me to get to the point where I'm about to, you know, get ready to clip. And you see he's, he's holding his sit and he's basically looking for treats. Okay. Now when we get to the clips, I mentioned last week that some fearful dogs have a negative reaction to the sound of the clips clipping. So that is something you want to explore before, um, before you get to this step. You don't want the first time you clip the clips to be when it's on, the harness is on your dog. So remember to test out your dog's reaction to that sound, you know, put the harness on the other side of you from the dog and, you know, make that clip and unclip the clips a few times, see if they're okay with it before doing it anywhere really near them. So assuming that your dog is okay with that sound, we're gonna start by doing that same reaching movement that I just showed you with two hands, but just touching the clips together before we actually try clipping the clips. The reason for this is, well, one, the touching the clips, you can get a little bit of that plastic on plastic sound, but it's not as loud as the clip. And also, um, if there's gonna be some tightening around the dog's torso, this will give you a little bit of that, but not as much as having it fully on. So it's an in-between step in a couple ways. All right, so here I'm just touching the clips together and then giving a treat, touching the clips together again, and I'm just kind of clicking them together, makes a little sound. And then I think here I'm gonna clip it And reward. Um, here's just another example from a slightly different angle of putting the harness on. So early on, I'll do one clip, give a treat, 
and then do the second clip and give a treat. This is a, this harness has a lot of straps on it. Oh yeah, he was trying to look for, I thought anyway, look for treats in my hand. So I just removed him for a second. And then when he stopped trying, I went back to do the clip. So you can see the configuration. This is the rough wear flag line. So you see there's some movement, you know, when you're tugging these straps together, there's some movement of the harness and that for some dogs, it's gonna take some getting used to. And would, if you've been moving the straps, um, you know, a little bit at a time as you work your way through the plan, then it won't be brand new to your dog when you try to go actually clip the harness on. All right, so now you've got the harness on your dog. That's exciting. Uh, okay, before I get to this step, Anne says, what do we do if our dog goes for my husband's hand? She won't let him put her harness on at all, miss the first video. Okay, Anne, um, if you go to our blog, which is dogkindtraining.com slash blog, you'll find last week's video there. Um, it's the latest blog entry. But yeah, if if um, if your dog is having nothing to do with your husband's hand coming toward her, um, there may be other exercises to do. But at least with the harness, um, is it just the harness that your dog has trouble with with your husband, or is it also your husband doing other kinds of handling with her, or petting her, reaching for her? Uh, if it's just the harness. And regardless, actually, you'll probably have to start where um, I showed you last week, or you, and you can find that on the blog. And that would be having the harness on the ground. Okay, just the harness. And she's your dog's fine if you put it on. Doesn't show any negative reactions. Um, usually start by having the harness just on the ground with your husband ha husband's hands nowhere near it. <laughs> And you'll just start with a simple game and your husband would be doing this training, not you. So your husband's got the treats. He's sitting on the ground with your dog. Harness is on the ground a few feet from him. And when your dog touches the harness with her nose, his or her nose or sniffs it, she, I guess, yeah, her nose, your husband will toss a treat to her. That's the very first step. And with him, you may need to... Um, well, you'll have to experiment. I mentioned a few different in-between steps. Like for instance, some dogs need you to go from harness on the ground, you nowhere near it and they'll touch it. And then harness on the ground, you're really not near it, but your hand is on the ground, say a foot from the harness. And they do the, they they target the harness, touch it with their nose. And then, you know, moving your hand closer in not, you don't move it during the step. You don't want, you know, as your dog goes to nose target the harness, your hands like, haha, I'm moving. And, Kind of changes the picture for them because that can scare them but um, you may have to with um, subsequent steps move have the hand be placed closer to the harness before your dog makes a decision to go in and target the harness until your husband can actually be having his hand resting on the harness or grasping it but still on the ground you may need to do some little teeny steps in there uh, in the beginning and the big thing because she already has um you know, some sounds like some negative experiences with the harness with your husband putting it on and it has some discomfort and has probably learned that, um, you know, snapping or whatever does, in fact, you know, work. It's been reinforced. It works to get your husband to back off. You'll want to be extra, extra conservative with his his training of this behavior because we have we're kind of digging out of a hole, um, not starting from scratch. OK. Um, so once the harness is on, um, Anne says, if she barks at him, is it best to leave it for a while? Yeah, you don't, if if she's barking at him, it's already, the training scenario is already way too hard. So just, you know, leave it and then maybe later come back and figure out where can you start where there's zero discomfort, no barking, anything. Most dogs putting the novel object on the ground, the harness, I guess it's not novel to your dog because you put it on, but put the harness on the ground and then have your husband sit on the floor several feet from it should be okay. Now it's possible that because she hates it when, you're, <laughs> when your husband harnesses her that you you might have to be the one to pick up the harness and put it on the ground or at least let not let her see your husband pick up the harness to put it down. Um, so you can start with no no upset no behaviors you don't want. 
but yeah, any forcing um, of this kind of thing or like pushing through the fear or aggression usually comes by either literally or figuratively to, um, to bite you in the butt. All right. Um, once your dog has the harness on, many dogs, once it's on, they're, they seem fine. They don't seem to notice it. Um, it's just really the handling involved and getting a harness on them. That's the problem, but not all dogs. And certainly if you've got, if you have one of these fearful pups, you know, maybe you've adopted recently, you're not sure if they've ever had a harness on before. It may feel weird on their bodies. Um, it's not a bad idea to do a little bit of work with them, making sure they're comfortable moving around wearing the harness. So we did this a little bit opportunistically, but I'll show you a few examples of what we did with Pancake. And Pancake is a little bit um, different that, you know, he has three, because he's missing a front leg, the harness tends to twist a little bit on him over time. Um, I think it's harder to fit quite right. So I just wanted to make sure, you're gonna see several harnesses in these videos. We trained like four harnesses, but we started out with just some hand target, which he already knew. So here I'm putting out my hand and he's gonna nose touch right there. And I just needed him to take a couple steps to get there. Or here, for instance, he was I was having him stretch up with the harness on, put his little paw on my leg and, and getting a treat up there. And not only, here I should, not only are you, um, you know, trying to slowly introduce the feeling of moving around in the harness and pairing it with good stuff, right? You know, I have treats in all these videos. It also gives you a chance to watch how your dog is moving and see if um, you see any telltale signs that, oh, they, it actually isn't that comfortable. You know, it may not be dramatic, like your dog just flops on the floor and refuses to move, although that's a good sign that maybe <laughs> more work is needed with the harness. But um, if your dog, say, hesitates to do movements that they would normally um, or does them in a sort of abbreviated way, like just smaller movements or anything like that, that's a, a hint that there is some discomfort there. And that might mean, um, I mean, it's possible that training can address that. It may also be that the harness is rubbing somewhere, is too constrictive, um, too constricting. You need, you know, you may want to try a different kind of harness. Just something to keep in mind. So here we did that stretching. Here we started to do some actual moving. I don't know why he's running into Juno here, but <laughs> it's not a great camera angle, but um, walking and running obviously are the main activities we expect the dog to do. So I'm gonna jog, I'm running across the room to get him to follow me. Um, and he looked a little clumsy there, but that's his normal, <laughs> his normal clumsiness level. Um, and then here, another fun thing to do when building comfort with the harness or assessing the comfort of the harness is to have your dog um, engage in fun like enrichment activities that they would do anyway. This um, here you see Pancake's head buried in what we call his activity tub, which is a laundry basket full of random stuff, dog toys, uh, old sheets, you can see those egg carton things and just treats uh, hidden. It's actually his kibble, but food hidden throughout the thing because this requires a lot of maneuvering from him. So this is a way for us to see how he moved in it with a lot of um, different kinds of movements and also make sure he was you know, willing and having a good time wearing the harness. Um, and also here, a nice uh, bonus here is that some stuff is actually touching the harness and probably causing a little bit of additional feeling, pressure, whatever movement, which um, is good for him to get used to. It's not the most graceful dog, but anyway, so this, um, because he does this a lot, I know this, it, again, it looks a bit clumsy, but that is, that's like how he moves normally. Um, since he does, uses his activity tub a lot, I can look at this and say, okay, he's showing no hesitancy to try to climb into his activity tub or pull stuff out. And this is how he normally looks when he's digging around and in there looking for treats. I'm not seeing any um, changes in the way he's moving. Okay, let me get back to our slide and then I see I have a question. Um, here, I'm gonna put up the slide with our, our free Facebook support group. So if you're not already in there, um, feel free to join us. It's a nice group of people where you can ask questions and get support. 
Um, someone said I missed part one. So part one is on our blog, which is at dogkindtraining.com slash blog. And the latest entry, which will be from last week, is part one of the harness training. And that's getting from introducing the harness, like on the floor, not touching it, not anything, to getting your dog to have their head through the harness and the weight of the harness released on them. But and then this week we added the, you know, reaching and messing with the straps and clipping it on. All right. Um, any questions? Did anyone try any of the steps from last week and have uh, success or have trouble? We'll see if I can get my face on here. <laughs> ha, okay. Um, yeah, this is, like I said, most people who whose um, dogs aren't particularly sensitive to having their bodies touched and handled are probably not going to need anything this conservative. But most of um, our audience, you know, since what we specialize in is fear and aggression, um, most of you who, who follow us have dogs that have some have some issues are more likely to be a little bit um, you know, more suspicious of new things, um, more hesitant to have things touch them or to have you manipulate them in any way. So it's helpful to um, have a really conservative plan to start with. And then, you know, if your dog flies through it, that's great. It won't take you much extra time. But um, most likely, if you have a dog like Pancake, who I realize looks relatively good in the videos, um, and I, the thing is, I didn't progress to harness training until we had worked on, met, you know, a lot of other things, comfort with hands in general, hands coming toward him, lots of hand targeting, um, some touch and petting, because uh, previous to that, I couldn't touch him at all. So that's part of it. But really, he was, he was not um, okay at all. Like, I would never would have dreamed of trying to harness him before, you know, a couple months ago. So even though he looks pretty good, that's it's a result of a lot of patience and slow work. It's not, you know, that he's an easy dog. He's like the opposite of an easy dog. Um, okay. All right, I don't see if anyone has any questions, pop them in really quickly. Um, next week, we're going to talk about leashes. Um, we have had many of you in our group mention that your dog is afraid of the leash um, or maybe you can get the leash on but they don't want it they don't like going outside they don't like going on walks or they go out the door but then they like freeze up and they don't want to move um, so this may take two sessions i'm not sure yet but we'll be talking about introducing the leash just and um it's not that uncommon at least it didn't seem terribly uncommon when i worked in animal sheltering to encounter dogs that were going up for adoption who as far as we could tell, had never been on a leash. Like it was a completely foreign concept to them. So we are starting with literally introducing this thing. What is this new object? And and getting them used to having it clipped on and off, the weight of it on their equipment. Um, and then, you know, a little bit getting used to some the feeling of a little bit of tension on the leash because that's inevitably going to happen on a walk. And then we'll start moving into, you know, can we leave the house? <laughs> Which is really... You need the leash to leave the house, but fear of the outdoors is um, often a, a, a separate problem. So watch for that next week. We'll start talking about leashes. If I can get through it all in one session, I will. Um, if not, we'll just break it up into two. All right. All right, everybody. Um, really nice to see you here, and I love it when people jump on and ask questions. Um, like I said, join the Facebook group if you're not already in there, um, or we have our new monthly training membership, which lets you get, um, have access to trainers all the time and get to ask questions. And, um, so, you know, shoot me a message or email if you want more information about that, or just look on our website. It gives you a little more uh, personalized attention. Uh, Anne says the leash is another problem for hubby. So you're better having leash connected to the harness. Yeah, that's smart. Um, I would say, Anne, just start with the harness um, on the ground, like in last week's video. Um, 
when you start to get to the, and actually just leave the leash out of the picture because you're not at this uh, stage, you're not going to be clipping on the harness with the intent of going out for a walk. You're just doing it for training. And the problem with having the leash on the harness during training, if the dog is uncomfortable with the harness is that it may move around, it may hit the dog when you lift the harness up or just move around in a way that's alarming to the dog. It just throws in a kind of a wild card. So, um, I mean, I totally understand that for you, you know, it's fine for you to harness with the leash attached already and that's fine. But um, for your hubby, the only time he would be doing harness work is in training. He wouldn't in between those training sessions, just try to go put the harness on because that would uh, set you back and could undo all of your progress. But yeah, the leash is, um, we take for granted, so many of us, we take for granted that our dogs are used to being on a leash, but many dogs, did not grow up being walked. So <laughs> it's a definitely a new concept for them. Okay, happy Monday. I hope fireworks are over in your area or at least tapering off um, and that you survived last night okay. If you're in the US, it's a lot of places I know are really loud last night. Um, I will see you next week, but in the meantime, if you have any questions, um, like I said, you can PM us on Facebook, our email, you can use admin at dogkindtraining.com. That's admin, A-D-M-I-N at dogkindtraining.com. Um, if you want to ask a question or you can comment under this video, wherever you're watching it and I'll get an alert and then I'll come in and, and try to help. All right. Have a wonderful day, everyone. I will see you online.